this is, this particular passage is about a guy named Luigi Galvani, who was alive during the mid-1700s, conducting electrical experiments near a frog he had recently dissected. I'll read that again just so you can get a good picture. While conducting electrical experiments near a frog he had recently dissected. So this guy, he's got a dead frog on the table. It's flayed open and pieces of it are hanging out. And he just happens to be performing electrical experiments next to that. When I picture this in my brain, it's dark, late at night. It's raining and he's in a barn. I don't know, it just all kind of fits for me. I mean, if you've got a guy with a dead frog laid out, he just has, it's just sitting there, he's performing electrical experiments. Here we go. Galvani noticed that electrical sparks caused the frog's legs to twitch and even convulse. So sparks are flying, dead frog's there, and all of a sudden, the dead frog starts to twitch and convulse. So what does Galvani do? He puts more sparks on the dead frog. After further research, Galvani concluded that electricity was present in the frog. Today we know that electric currents are responsible for transmitting messages between body muscles and the brain. In fact, every action involving muscles is initiated by electrical activity. Right now, Brianna feels this. When I touch her, there are little electrical impulses that go all the way up to the brain and that's what everything is. All that stuff happening in your body is all current, all electricity. There is so much electricity in your body, and so much current charges that flow. Today, we are talking about current. The symbol for current is a capital I. And current is the movement of charge. At its most basic level, is the movement of charge. The equation for current, current is equal to delta Q over delta T. That is a boxed equation, literally. If you could watch the charges go by, and you had a stopwatch, you could start the stopwatch, click, and you could count them. One two, three, four, stop. And then you could add up the number of charges, divide by the amount of time, and this would be the current. The current is the rate at which charges pass through a wire. Dimensions on current. DJJ, dimensions on charge? Uh, joules. joules would be energy, not charge. Shivani? Um, coulombs. Coulombs divided by time, DJJ? What? Base dimensions for time. Coulombs over seconds. Coulombs per second. So, Current is in coulombs per second. We have a special name for this. It is called the amp or the ampere after the gentleman who did a bunch of work on this. We use a capital A for amperes or amps. Just so you know, amps are a base SI dimension. I would think that we would have chosen coulombs, but we did not. Base SI dimension are amps. Just so you know, when we talk about current, we are talking about something we generally call conventional current. Conventional current has to do with the direction of current, and the, the conventional current is where the direction of the current is the direction that positive charges would flow. I do want to highlight that term, would. So let's return back to the Niels Bohr classical model of the atom. The Niels Bohr classical model of the atom, please, Tolia, is what? Um, it's the nucleus. 
We have nucleus. Inside the nucleus are? Um, protons and neutrons. Protons and neutrons. Outside the nucleus? Um, orbitals and electrons. Electrons in orbital shells, if you will, in different states. Yes? Wood flow. So, conventional current is the direction of the current, and it's the direction of the current is the direction that positive charges would flow. Now, the positive charges are the protons, and those are inside the nucleus. The negative charges are in the orbital shells, and those are the electrons. Those are negative. So, it turns out that it's actually negative charges that flow. But unfortunately, back in the 1700s, when we picked a current direction, early 1800s, we thought it was the positive charges that flowed, and we were wrong. So realize, whenever we talk about current flow, we're talking about the direction that positive charges would flow. But the truth of the matter is, is it's negative charges that flow the opposite direction. I'll say it again just to make sure we understand. We assume that it's positive charges that are flowing in the direction we're going to write. So I'm going to have little arrows that indicate the direction of, of the current flow. And that is the direction that positive charges would flow. Class, do positive charges flow in that direction? Yeah. No. What is it that actually happens, Hamza? Negative charges flow. Which direction? Yeah. In the opposite direction. It is a sad and unfortunate thing, but in the end, it works out fine. Because negative charges flowing in the opposite direction, you have a negative times a negative, which equals a positive. So, there you go. We have two different types of current. We have one called alternating current. Or A, C, and we have direct current. Or D, C, alternating current and direct current. The easiest way to describe the difference between alternating current and direct current is by way of a graph. We will have current in amps on the y-axis, time in seconds on the x-axis, current and time. For alternating current, the current literally alternates. It looks like this, some sort of sine or cosine wave. The current direction changes, the current magnitude changes. This is alternating current. As opposed to direct current, which looks like this. Direct current, the current magnitude and direction stay constant the whole time. Now, the reason we have two different types of current is this. Your household appliances, my computer, this monitor, that TV, all those laptops, etc., all sorts of stuff in this room, that video camera, for example, all work best off of direct current. But the problem is there is a lot of energy loss per foot in electric in direct current. Alternating current, however, is, has much less energy loss per, over a certain distance. Therefore, the energy, the current that comes from the power company is actually alternating current. So the current out on the wires by the road is alternating current. The stuff that comes to the outlet is alternating current. And we have these. This is a little brick that's attached to most household appliances that converts that alternating current to direct current. Because direct current is, again, is much easier for our various appliances to use. In this class, we are going to treat all currents as though they are direct current um, because it's much easier to work with. In fact, even in AP, we don't quite get to alternating current. It's not a part of the curriculum in 